is Joe from Scarecrow Joe's Studio. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Um, and this tutorial, and yes, it's going to be another multi-segment tutorial. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to build an evil snowman. I call him Jack the Ripper Frost. In this first segment, uh, let's go over tools and materials that you'll need uh, to build the armature, basically. And then uh, also in the description of this video, I'll list all the tools and materials that you'll need to complete your sculpture from start to finish. All right, so let's go over tools and materials that you're going to need for this first segment. Um, first of all, you're going to need some balloons. Um, whether it's two balloons or three balloons, it's up to you on if you're going to make your evil snowman three uh, stacks, a stack of three balloons, or if you just wanted to make a smaller version and do two balloons. You'll inflate them um, so that your base is bigger than your middle and then your head is smaller than your middle. So basically just like building a snowman from snow. As you can see, I have already strip macheed my three balloons here. Um, so other than that, to strip mache, you're going to need some newspaper cut into strips. Uh, you're going to need some paper mache paste. I have a bowl of it here. Um, you're going to need a hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. Some scissors. A blade of some sort. A marker. And then you're going to need some crumbled up newspaper. And I have a bag of crumbled up newspaper sitting right here. Um, for this segment, that's pretty much all you're going to need. So let's get started here. I really didn't feel that it was necessary to show you how to strip mache balloons. Um, just make sure they're in various sizes if you're doing two or three for your snowman. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure that you have enough layers of strip mache on your balloons to make them very nice and solid. These have no, I can press on these and there's absolutely no soft spots anywhere on them. I probably put about, I don't know, five or six layers of strip mache on these, on these uh, balloons here. So they're nice and sturdy, but I'm gonna reinforce them as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, this is gonna be my very base. Uh, the very base of my uh, snowman. I'm going to cut a hole in the bottom here. And the way I'm going to do that is I like to draw a little, right in the center, I draw a little uh, dot. And then I kind of make some sort of like compass marks, if you would. And then I just kind of connect them just like that. Something like that. Make it as centered as you possibly can. I'm going to go ahead and take my blade and I'm going to cut that out. I cut out my little circle and as you can see, my balloon is still in there. And I just popped it and I took that out. Got my little circle here. Don't discard that. We're going to use it. What we're going to do is we are going to to reinforce this even further. We're going to take I am going to take some crumbled up newspaper and I'm going to fill the inside of this balloon with crumbled up newspaper. All right, I've got that newspaper pretty pre-packed in there that's going to help this balloon to hold its shape um, while I'm applying clay but the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little bottom piece here I'm going to flip it this way and I'm going to hot glue it back in into place so that's the next step and as always I like to have a little cup of cold water on hand just in case I get any uh, hot glue on my fingers. So 
I'm just going to squirt some hot glue right around the perimeter here of the opening that I just cut out. I'm going to take my uh, piece of balloon that I cut out from the bottom. I'm going to glue that right back into place. Adding some more glue right around the bottom or the, the edge here. Being very careful to keep uh, my being very careful to keep my fingers and my hands out of that hot glue. And I'm just gonna hold this in place until it cools and sets up for a couple of minutes. Alright, that's all glued into place, ready to go. Next step, this pointed part here. Um, so this would be the where the air stem of the balloon is. The air stem of the balloon on here. This is the bottom of the balloon. I'm going to cut around, cut this out so that I could insert this right over the, a portion of this area here. So I'm not going to take too much off at first because I'm not completely sure how far down I want this to be inserted. I'm just sort of eyeballing it right now. All right, so I cut out that uh, top portion there so that I can insert this right on top. <clears throat> and yes, I understand that this looks a little bit wonky right now the center piece is just as big as the bottom piece um, don't worry about that if that's how it's come out for you so far because we're going to bolt this up with clay but it would certainly be easier if you blew up your bottom base uh, just a little bit more than your middle that way you don't have to bulk it up so much with clay i uh when i uh, strip mache these balloons I just stripped my shade like six of them. They were all kind of uniform. Wasn't sure what I was going to use them for. So I'm just using three of them for the purpose of this tutorial. That's why my base is just as big as the middle section. Otherwise, if I had intended it to be an actual evil snowman, the base would have been blown up a little bit bigger. But again, not a big deal because I can bulk it up with clay. So we have that sitting there. We're, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing here um, with my the head of my snowman. But I'm not going to cut it um, I'm not going to cut the, the, uh, that part off so big so that it kind of slopes in. Um, I'm just going to cut off like the very edge here. So I'm going to try to get it as even as possible again. Um, around this very edge. All right, so there you have it. I have my three uh, snowballs, if you will. And uh, a couple other things to do to prep this to move forward. Um, I'm going to take that off of there for one. I'm going to stuff this uh, centerpiece, the center ball here, with some more newspaper. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue it on to the base. All right, I haven't stuffed it all the way to the brim because obviously <clears throat> I'm going to need some room in there to hot glue that. So I'm just going to go ahead around the rim here with my hot glue and hot glue this into place. Um, we are going to go back and strip mache these junctions here that we have glued into place after the glue uh, after the hot glue has cooled and set to reinforce these areas even more and especially, especially since i have a big gap right here so I'm going to reinforce that with some more strip mache um, as soon as this cools. So while this is cooling and I've got it all set up, 
I just I'm just kind of uh, moving it looking at it from all different angles to make sure that I have it on there straight straight up and down and not really leaning to one side or the other I think I've done a pretty good job I'm probably gonna say that this is gonna be the front of my uh, my snowman um, now on this the head here I am NOT going to stuff this with newspaper because I'm going to draw in some eyes and a mouth um, so it will be hollow and in the back of it I'm gonna cut in a slit so that I can insert a light I can spray paint the inside of this and then insert a light so I'm just kind of lining it up that looks good and once again I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue the head in place here all right so we have the base the middle section and then our head of what will be our evil snowman um, I'm just waiting for this glue to cool and then what I'm going to do is take some newspaper strips dipped in paste and I'm gonna reinforce around these areas where I've connected them with the hot glue um, one thing that I can do is to bulk up my the base because it is a little bit on the uh, smaller side and I really wanted it to be a bigger base I can take some newspaper like this I can attach it around here with some hot glue and I can bulk it up that way and then I can strip mache the whole thing um, that's certainly an option so if you do run into a pro a situation where um, your base just isn't big enough that's that's that could be a solution for you you could just take newspaper uh, crumble it up and just attach it all the way around um, with some uh, masking tape and then go over it and even it out with a couple of layers of uh, strip mache uh, so newspaper strips dipped in paste all right so I ended up changing my mind and uh, I bulked up the bottom with uh, a bunch of newspaper and I uh, held all that in place with some masking tape um, so it is a little bit a little bit larger and it will get bulked out even more um, even more so after I put the clay on it but um, I figured it'll save me some time since I'm gonna strip mache around uh, the areas where I hot glued <clears throat> the uh, newspaper uh, uh, strip mache newspaper balls into place here um, so that's what I'm gonna do now and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start on this bottom layer and where the uh, where I hot glued them into place so that juncture um, I'm gonna get at least three strips in there um, I don't need a whole lot um, I just want to make sure that it's just not gonna be temporarily held into place by uh, hot glue I want my armature to be very very strong in applying the, uh, the paper mache clay after this dries and um, I didn't mention previously but uh, make sure that your your newspaper uh, your strip mache balloons are completely completely dry uh, before you move forward in uh, attaching them together want to make sure that they are completely completely dry so I'm just gonna carry on here I'm gonna get uh, like I said three layers around the uh, areas where I hot glued my balloons into place and then I'm gonna go ahead and put probably a couple of layers around this whole thing down here the bottom base 
to even it out. And I'm not really very concerned about down here. Uh, my clay is gonna, I'll, I'll even that out with some clay. So uh, that's gonna be it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set these, set this whole thing in front of a fan uh, to dry. And it'll probably take, I'll probably leave it about uh, 12 hours or so to dry. And then I can get back into designing the face um, inserting some arms and creating some arms and some hands for it. Um, also creating a top hat and, um, and then starting to sculpt the thing out. So that will be next after this dries completely. All right, so as you can see, my uh, my snowman form is completely dry. The strip mache has been allowed to dry um, for at least, I'd say 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so in this next steps here, you're gonna need a few other tools and materials. Uh, you're going to need a marker um, you're going to need some thin, flexible cardboard, whether it's from a cereal box or a heavier stock of, uh, this is a poster board. Um, we're going to use that to create the hat. Um, you'll also need some thicker corrugated cardboard for the hat. And then for the arms, um, what I'm going to use is I have some... I have some tree branches here um, that I've picked up. I'm gonna use these for the arms. I like the way that they look. They're funky. Um, I might end up having to cut this one down a little bit, but um, that's what I'm gonna use for the arms. Um, you can use various sizes, or you can even create these uh, yourself uh, using cardboard tubes and cutting them down and then creating the little fingers but I like to use found materials or more organic materials, such as branches like this for the arms of my uh, evil snowmen. So go ahead and gather that stuff up because we will be getting to that at some point in the tutorial. I'm going to set that stuff aside for right now. Um, the other thing that you're going to need, once again, is a hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. Um, you're going to need some paper mache paste paper mache clay, and then some various smoothing or sculpting tools. And then also uh, to help smooth out your paper mache clay, you'll need some, a couple of uh, paint brushes. I have two different sizes of just paint brushes here, and I use that with my paste to smooth out my clay once it's applied to my form. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna design the face of our uh, snowman. Yeah, um, one last thing, and this is optional um, for the teeth. I'm using uh, some polymer clay. This is oven baked Sculpey, um, and these off yellow, yellowish ones. This is Durham's water putty clay. Um, again, completely optional. I just form them in into a tooth shape. The Sculpey clay and bake them in the oven. And with the Durham's water putty, that just air, it's just air dry. You just mix it up and that's how it looks. Um, so I'm gonna use, I like using these um, for my teeth. Just gives it, uh, lends it a little bit more interest in my opinion and it's a different texture completely than from the, the uh, paper mache clay. But you can certainly form your teeth out of paper mache clay and use that instead of Sculpey clay or the Durham's water putty clay or any kind of air dry clay. That'll work too. Um, again, completely optional. Um, but if you are choosing to uh, use your paper mache clay, form your teeth now and allow them to dry so that when we get to the sculpting phase um, in this tutorial, your teeth will be ready to be inserted into your wet clay. So um, 
Again, first things first, we're going to move forward now and design our face here of our evil snowman. So what I like to do is I'll just take the time here and I'll turn my snowman form in all different directions and I want to see um, what best is going to suit uh, the area for my, for my face. So I'm just kind of turning it and you would do the same. Now I realize that my bottom form here um, isn't exactly completely round and even. That's not a big deal because I'm going to go in with clay and clay all of that over, bulk it out a little bit more and make it a little bit more even. So I pretty much determined I think I like this area here. I'm going to use that there for his face. I'm going to make him pretty gnarly here. Alright, so I have very, very roughly, hopefully you could see that, I have very roughly drawn in my eye shapes that I want. Um, I'm going to insert a nose here. I might make it out of polymer clay, I haven't decided, or maybe another small gnarly looking like little tree branch for his nose instead of like the shape of a carrot which you would normally find in snowmen and then I've drawn in roughly drawn in the shape of his mouth um, he's gonna have a big smile going on but as you can imagine um, after these pointed teeth are inserted um, he's gonna look pretty pretty gnarly Pretty wicked looking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut out um, these areas using my blade here. All right, so I've got the mouth cut out. I've got the eyes sockets cut out, and I do realize it looks kind of goofy, but I promise he will not look goofy at all once we're done. Um, one more thing that I want to cut out is in the very back of the head here. Because um, like I mentioned earlier, I want to be able to insert a light. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out from the back of his head um, a square or a shape that I can insert a light in there. Alright, there you go. That's where I'm going to insert my light. And I know that you could see right through there and you could see where the hole is. Um, not a big deal because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside of his, of his head um, with a can of spray paint. I'll just go in there and spray paint in there um, probably red um, just so that he kind of glows red. All right, moving right along, you're going to need your thin flexible cardboard and a pair of scissors. Is what we're going to do is to make these eye to make these eye sockets more three-dimensional we're gonna glue in some of these pieces so fire up your uh, your hot glue gun so I'm cutting I don't know it's probably a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch to a half an inch in uh, thickness does not have to be perfect you do kind of want them all to sort of match. Um, what we're ba basically what we're going to do is create a border of our eyes using this cardboard, just like that, and we're just going to glue them in. We're not going to do it with the mouth. We're going to leave that mouth um, just like that, so that we could. When we get to the sculpting part or laying on the clay, we can have that area to insert the teeth into the wet clay. So this isn't rocket science. I'm taking my cardboard strip and in each area I'm kind of lining it up, holding that mark with my thumb 
cutting it with my scissors. And then I'm going to go ahead, run a line of hot glue on one end. And insert it just like that. Might take a few seconds for it to start to cool and set up. So while I'm waiting for that side to cool and set up, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side, same way. And I'm going to continue on. I have uh, one, two, three, four. Four more pieces to cut and glue in for the eyes. All right, I've got those pieces glued in. So why did I do that? What was the purpose of doing that? Well, the purpose of that is twofold. Number one, to make it look more three-dimensional. And number two, this is basically my guide on how thick I want my clay to be. Um, to, to actually make these more, look more three-dimensional instead of so flat. So that's my reasoning for it. I do that all the time with jack-o'-lanterns that I create. I do the same method, um, cutting out the eyes, the nose, you know, all the features, and then I insert uh, thin, flexible cardboard pieces in there. <clears throat> I like the way it looks. I think it makes it stand out a little bit more. Um, so that's the purpose of that. Uh, for good measure, now that this has been sitting for a while, I'm just going to take my glue gun and squirt some more hot glue uh, right around the edges of these pieces on the outside here to make sure that they're not going to go anywhere. All right, very next thing that I want to do here is create his hat. Um, easiest way to measure an opening for a hat, in my opinion, is taking some thin, flexible cardboard. This, again, is a piece of poster board. And what I do is I cut a strip of it off, and I use that to place and measure on the very top of the head where I want where I want this hat to sit so I'm thinking right about there so that's where I kind of measured it I don't want it to come back too far so that it blocks my opening so I measured it that way this strip and then I cut off the excess, and with a piece of masking tape, I held that in place. Next thing I do is on a uh, piece of corrugated cardboard. Um, it doesn't need to be considered all that thick, but it does need to be, a, you know, a nice piece of sturdy corrugated cardboard. I'm going to put my little measuring strip here, circle right in the middle of it and this is not going to be perfect by any means but I'm going to hold it down and I'm just basically going to trace I'm going to trace right around that something like that and now we need a brim this is going to be the opening that we're going to put on top of the snowman's head and around here this will be the brim of the hat so I just kind of freehand it um, I want a big enough brim so that I could uh, cut off strips of my thin flexible cardboard or if you're going to use poster board you could use poster board
and it, it will easily attach and you'll see what I mean momentarily here. Okay, so with cutting out corrugated cardboard, especially when you're cutting out a circle, I like to use a steak knife. I just find it's a lot easier to use a steak knife. Um, and you can basically use a sewing motion. All right, so I have my uh, circle cut out here and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna use my steak knife and cut out the brim of the hat. All right, so that's all cut out. That's the brim of our hat with the opening. Positioning. So if you could see, it's never gonna be completely flush onto the the head but it's fine it doesn't need to be all right now before we attach this we're going to create the rest of our top hat and the way i'm going to do that is using my poster board here <clears throat> got a pretty good length of uh, poster board and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut As you can see, I'm not measuring anything at this point. I have that, the brim of my hat. Looks a little bit wonky. I think I'm gonna trim it just to make it a little more uniform. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm taking my poster board, I'm just creating a cylinder and obviously I'm not going to need all of this length. I just want enough so that it will basically cover right around the hole there. So if you're looking at it from the inside, something like that. So that's all the length that I need is right about right here. So just holding that in place, again, I'm not concerned about it being completely even. I'm not measuring. You can if you want, by all means, go ahead and measure. Get rid of my excess. Initially, how I'm going to hold the cylinder together is with some masking tape. So I'm just cutting off a few pieces of masking tape and sticking them on the edge of my table here. So something like that. I'm just I just held it in place with some masking tape. Again, making sure that it does kind of fit around the opening there still. Um, how big do you want your hat? How big do you want your top hat? We are gonna cut. Um right around the edge here. I'm going to give you an idea. I'm making little slits on the edge all the way around. They're probably about a quarter of an inch. 
in width something like that again they don't have to be perfect and I think I'm probably going about an inch to inch and a quarter in height cutting up into the tube here next step is I'm gonna bend all of these down this is a very very simple but effective way to make a hat so I bent all those down and that's how it's gonna sit just like that so if I take the top portion here which actually this is not gonna be big enough I'm gonna need to cut another one but if you can imagine that's what your hats gonna look like basically before I attach this <clears throat> to the base or the brim of the hat let me bring forward my uh, evil snowman that would be a very 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 large hat I don't want my hat to be that that big so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my marker I've got this up here take my marker and I think I'm gonna go about right here that's how tall I want my hat All right so I've got that trimmed down to a size that I want it to be now I'm gonna go ahead and on the inside of my hat here where it's just attached on the outside with a piece of masking tape I'm gonna run some hot glue along that line on the inside and I, I understand that you probably can't see what I'm doing but there you go there you have it just on the inside where it attaches run some hot glue there and that will hold it in place uh, better than just that piece of masking tape and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to run a bunch of hot glue around the brim of my hat where I'm going to attach that uh, cylinder there lots of glue on there and now I'm just going to press this cylinder right on there um, be careful it's hot so if you just press it down just like that these will attach And you'll have a nice secure bond with the hot glue just like that all right now because my opening here at the top of the hat <clears throat> turned out to be bigger than the cutout circle that's not a big deal I have another piece of corrugated cardboard here I'm just gonna flip it over flipped it over and positioning it and I'm gonna take my marker and right around the outer edge here make my circle and I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna cut it out so that it's a tiny bit wider than my actual lines to ensure that it will fit on the top of my top hat got that cut out <clears throat> it fits right on top pretty evenly pretty well I'm happy with that I'm gonna go ahead and take some hot glue 
and right around the edge. There's not a lot of surface area here, but this is how we're going to get it to initially stay on. Just positioning it and kind of holding it down into place. Um, I'm going to hold that down for a few seconds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with my hot glue gun and I'm going to put hot glue all the way around this edge as well. All right. I do have some masking tape that I attached here to just to kind of this part. Uh, just kept wanting to pop up and I didn't want to sit there and hold that hot glue down. So I just kind of put some masking tape on there to help it and don't really need it anymore, but it's fine to just leave it. All right, now we're ready to attach our top hat here. Um, you got a decision to make. Do you want your hat kind of cocked off to one side? Do you want it straight forward? Um, you know, it's completely up to you. Yeah, I'm gonna go with something like that. So that's how it looks from the front. One side and then the back. Holding it, you can see where there is still that hole there um, where I can insert my light and it's not being blocked by the hat. So once again with my hot glue, I'm going to carefully go around the inside edges and squirt hot glue all the way in there. Um, again, there's going to be some areas where there's some gaps, such as right there, um, where it doesn't, the, the head doesn't completely meet, um, the hat, not a big deal. The hot glue is not going to be the only thing holding this on. Um, we are going to be permanently holding it on with some clay when we go in there and start doing our clay work. I'm gonna let that dry and then the next step is going to be attaching my wooden arms. And then really at that point, we are completely done with building the armature of our evil snowman. All right, that's on there, nice and sturdy. Last thing we need to do uh, for our armature is I'm going to attach my arms here and I'm I've chosen to use these tree branch pieces of tree branch that I found out in my backyard um, I'm gonna determine where I want them to be how I want them to be inserted and if I need to trim them down at all this one I probably will. So basically what I'm looking at right now is where I want them to be inserted into the body here. And looking at it, I think I, I want them to be about right there. So once again, I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to make a mark. About where I want them to be inserted so there's that one that one will probably be in right about there and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take again once again using my uh, steak knife I'm just gonna make an opening Now keep in mind that we did fill the inside of that with some newspaper. 
So there is going to be a little bit of a resistance. So taking my arm. I think that's going to look pretty cool, actually. Look at that. There's that one. I can angle it or position it any way that I want. He could be, the hand can be up like that. It could be straight across. It could be angled down. Um, if you're going to use these bran branches, try to find some really interesting ones like this that are curved. It's going to lend it a lot more interest. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Insert that arm. So play around with it once you got your branches. Um, play around with it. See where or how you would like it to be positioned. Um, I can even do this. I'll stick it in this way. I think I like this way better though. All right, so I kind of played around. I switched out the arms. Um, this is the position that I, I kind of like the way they look. That's how it looks from the side on that angle. Uh, the other side on that angle. And I'm just gonna go ahead now and I'll hot glue those into place. For the nose, um, I'm gonna go ahead again with my steak knife. Just make a little uh, hole there. I have another little tree branch or a piece of a, a tree branch um, that I really like. I'm not going to form a carrot nose like you would typically find in a snowman. Um, that's what I did with the other uh, snowman that you saw in the intro of this video. I'm going to use a little tree branch. I kind of want to stick to that theme. And let's just see how that's going to look. There you go. You can see that from the side. It could be pointing down. It could be pointing up. I think I'm going to have it pointing down, though. Sort of like that. I like the way that that looks. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm just going to hot glue my tree branch arms in. I'm going to squirt some hot glue inside the opening for the nose that I created and just stick that <clears throat> right in there. And for good measure, I'll squirt a little bit more hot glue right around the nose. And basically, there you have it. We have created our armature for our evil snowman. Um, I'm calling him Jack the Ripper Frost. So that is a wrap on the armature build for our uh, evil snowman, Jack the Ripper Frost. We got a lot of work done. Um, in the next segment, we're going to come back and start applying clay and sculpting out the details um, and in the face, applying the teeth. And that'll be next in segment two, coming up as soon as I could possibly get to it. Um, as always, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you in the next one.